Number eight then from the 2015 New Hire Pay Power One for four marks. It's got a shape here, a rectangle. It's talking about area and it's mentioning the area is less than 15. So that looks like a quadratic inequation that you've got here. Another standard question, not much disguised by this shape. Because the first thing you would say would be, how would you work out the area of that shape? Well, the area would be the length times the breadth. That's x times x minus 2. That's not worth a mark yet. Now, the rest of the information says that area is less than 15. A is less than 15 means you've got this. x times x minus 2 is less than 15. And that's the first mark, just for interpreting that picture, interpreting the situation, creating this model. Now, there's a factorisation which is of no use to you because it's not equated to a zero. So that'll just have to get undone and everything brought over. So that then becomes x squared minus 2x minus the 15 is less than zero. There's the second mark. Now comes the problem of the quadratic inequation. Yes, you're going to factorise it. So it'll be x times x. Multiply to give 15 with a difference of 2. That'll be 3 and 5. The negative for the middle term goes to the larger one. So that must be the opposite, which is 3. And then that's where you stop form following the normal procedure for solving an equation. What you do don't do now is then say, oh, so either this is less than zero or that is less than zero. If that was less than zero and that was less than zero, the product would be greater than zero. You can do it by inequations, but you have to be careful. You're better off just doing it by thinking of a picture of the answers. When is this less than zero? Recognising that that's a positive quadratic. And that factorisation is handy because it tells you where this quadratic cuts the x-axis. It tells you where this quadratic switches from being above to below, from being greater than to less than zero. So here's this quadratic. And this is telling you it's got roots at negative 3 and 5. And it's this picture you should use to solve the inequation. So quite clearly looking at this, when is this thing less than zero? It's this part here. I'm not including those points, but it'll be anything between them. So the answer to this would be x is less than 5, but greater than, and you could combine that in one statement, negative 3. But with, if that had simply been a coordinate question, that may well be fine. But when you've got these real situations, you have to check if these numbers make sense in terms of the real dimensions of a rectangle. For instance, the breadth, rather, what the breadth of that rectangle is given by this, x minus 2. That can't be 0 or the rectangle wouldn't be there. So there is another condition in addition to this. Since x minus 2 has to be greater than 0, that means x has to be greater than 2. So finally, that means that combining these two together, you've got x can be less than 5, but it must be greater than 2. But that's the fourth mark. Not stopping at this and not considering the consequences of your action. Now, one other thing, if you didn't put down an interval like this, if you kept them as two separate statements, you have to be careful what you said. If you wanted to say this as your answer, x is greater than 2, and the other one, x is less than 5. Don't write or, because or means anything more than 2 would do. 10, 20, and that says anything less than 5 would do. No, the two have to be linked as an interval. If you wanted to write them separately, you'd have to use the word and. If you put them separately with an or, you wouldn't get the last mark. That's fine here, because that's an interval between 2 and 5.